Whenever I make a video about switching to Linux or a different desktop environment, I usually just talk about the two biggest ones, GNOME and KDE Plasma. But why is that? Linux offers a lot of choices, so why not XFCE, Cinnamon, Mate or just a tiling window manager? Well, there is of course a reason on why I think that other desktop environments might not be suited for everyone. And in this video, we are going to discuss why. Before we start though, I want to say that this video will be heavily influenced by my own personal setup, preferences and use cases and might not be applicable to you at all. If I say something negative about a desktop environment, then this doesn't necessarily apply to the overall experience, but just my personal needs. And this is going to be very important, because none of the ones I mentioned today are bad. For you, they might even be a lot better. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, why don't I show other desktop environments to newcomers? Well, one of the reasons are current trends and design choices. Many Linux desktop environments are heavily customizable, but look rather old by default. Showing those to everyone will certainly result in some negative attitude or bias that Linux is just old and outdated, while in reality it's just a design choice. I usually like to show desktop environments that already look nice by default or can be made that way without much effort. And I know what you're thinking right now. That's pretty dumb reasoning. But let me tell you from personal experience that first impressions matter. And if users cannot quickly replicate it on their systems, then we lose them before they even get to know it. KDE Plasma just looks more modern in comparison to Cinnamon, if we judge it based on current trends like frosted glass and all that. In reality, Cinnamon with its flatter design doesn't look old or anything, but it just doesn't follow the current trends, which is might might seem unusual for many. Another reason why I sometimes favor a desktop environment over others are hotkeys. And even though many don't use them, a lot of people still do. When comparing GNOME to KDE Plasma, at first it seems like a no-brainer to choose GNOME if you want a Windows-like experience. But by default, Plasma actually doesn't maximize your windows with the meta and arrow up key. Additionally, if you lose a window out of your view, then on Windows you could trigger a little window menu with Alt and Space. That also doesn't work with Plasma, but it does on GNOME. Examples like that are for people who just know enough to be dangerous, basically. It seems unnecessary and like another dumb argument, but many Linux desktop environments use different shortcuts, which might be better than the Windows way, but for beginners who are used to them, an easy transition is key. It's not all about looks and having a taskbar, but also the minor things. But then again, GNOME also doesn't come with a maximize or minimize button by default, so what the heck do I know? One important thing, however, is the availability of support if you need it. Because GNOME and KDE Plasma are more often used than other desktop environments, it's easier to find support for them. This especially applies for a new release, whereas on other desktop environments, you might need to dig deeper. I would say that this isn't an issue for the top 5, but it certainly is something to be aware of. But the single biggest thing at this particular moment that is preventing me from showing other desktop environments is the lack of Wayland support. And yeah, I know it's controversial since a lot of features are not yet implemented and many still claim to run into issues or just don't bother with it at all since X11 still works fine for them. But bear with me. For more than over a year, I have been running my desktop exclusively on Wayland. And since the ex-Wayland bridge became more mainstream, had no more issues on it. It has come a long way since 2022. And for anyone who has a dual monitor setup, I do recommend it. And frankly, that's a lot of people. Here's the thing, desktop environments who already support Wayland also offer X11 as a fallback. So in case something doesn't work, you have the option to switch. That makes the desktop environment objectively speaking, much more compatible with a lot of different setups. Since you don't run into synchronization issues, locked refresh rates or sometimes some weird tearing, as each display is being handled separately. There are a lot of Wayland haters out there, and I agree that Wayland still has a lot of problems, but having the option of both is very important for a lot of people. 
I've seen countless examples online, whereas people with mixed refresh rate displays encounter issues. And honestly, the Wayland protocol and compositors that support it have received a lot of updates, which make the experience better. Especially very recently with GNOME 46 and KD Plasma 6. Implementing direct scan out, getting rid of forced vsync, allowing variable refresh rate and tearing in games, as well as the implementation of several APIs, also called portals, has just gotten a lot better. Despite what you read online, you can share your screen with Wayland. And even if the application doesn't support it for some reason, many distros also ship with the X Wayland bridge by default, which automatically runs in the background and it essentially makes no difference in usability. You can nowadays game with the same latency and running things like games through the compatibility layer X Wayland has pretty much become indistinguishable from X11. I believe that new users should experience a modern desktop experience that still looks similar to other operating systems in some way, while they can still keep their initial behaviors and utilize their hardware to its maximum. I don't want people searching online why Linux feels like it's running games with low FPS, because they have a dual monitor setup and X11 has problems with that. But I also don't want people to think that Linux is outdated. Different user interfaces have different design choices, which is good. I want to show that if someone wants to have the visuals that other operating systems offer, then they can get them without much or even any effort whatsoever. I mean sure, I could customize XFCE and make it basically identical to KDE Plasma, but it would still have the X11 limitations. Now for a lot of people, that is not an issue at all. And in fact, I am blowing this way out of proportion. The XORG display protocol X11 has been used on Linux since basically forever. And it worked just fine. But its age really starts to show in some places. Be that as it may, there's honestly no real reason to say that GNOME and KDE Plasma are better desktop environments because they have Wayland support. Like I said in the beginning, they are what works best for my personal use cases, which is mostly recording, editing, gaming and occasionally watching videos or movies online. And that is what I'm showing to newcomers because it works and I don't encounter any issues with it. Yeah, that's basically it. The answer to the question on why I don't really show other desktop environments. They just wouldn't work as well as others for me personally. Again, this doesn't mean that this applies to you as well. If you have a single monitor setup, then from a technical side, it doesn't matter if you use X11 or Wayland. Heck, even the Steam Deck still relies on it in desktop mode. And even if you do have a multi-monitor setup, then you still might not be experiencing the issues that I've mentioned earlier. Depending if you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, your hotkeys might also differ. Pick whatever you prefer and don't worry about it. Cinnamon, XFCE or a window manager like Hyperland, all of them are here for a reason. And just because I don't use them currently doesn't mean that they are worse. Don't let others decide for you, but pick your own path. Okay, that video came out a bit more biased than I initially hoped, but I think it explains on why I only really show GNOME and KDE Plasma in my videos. Personal preferences and collected experiences. That's basically it. If you still like this video, then I really appreciate it if you would show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks for watching. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.